Whenever I recommend shows to people, I usually bring up Game of Thrones, and if they haven't seen the show, I always warn them that while the show is incredible, the ending isn't. After the end of the sixth season, the show had pretty much caught up to the books, and without George R.R. Martin's intricate writing to take inspiration from, the show dropped in quality for the last two seasons, and it was especially bad in the final season. Unfortunately, this lackluster ending soured what could have been one of, if not the best TV shows of all time. But what if that wasn't the case? Well, after thinking about how this series ended, I thought of a different way to end the show that I think is a big improvement. We're just going to be making changes for the last season, so quickly let's go over where we were in the story when Season 8 began. Back in Season 7, Jon Snow is really worried about the Night King and the White Walkers, and after learning that Dragonglass can kill the White Walkers, Jon goes to see everyone's favorite Targaryen, Daenerys. The two become close and eventually become really close. Jon and Tyrion convince Daenerys to make a truce with Cersei until the White Walker threat can be dealt with, but Cersei doesn't believe them about the White Walkers. So Jon grabs some guys and goes up north to the other side of the wall to grab a white for proof. This goes really badly though, and Daenerys has to come with her dragons to rescue the group. But the Night King kills one of Daenerys' dragons in the process and revives him as a part of his army. Jon brings the white to Cersei and eventually she says she'll honor the deal. But it turns out that Cersei is lying and she's hoping that the two forces will take each other out and she can take out whoever's left. So it turns out that after this horrible journey up to the north, the only reinforcements from the Lancaster army is gonna be good old Jaime. Finally, the season ends with the Night King taking out the wall with his new undead dragon and marching his army to the south. The first half of the season builds up to the battle with the White Walkers in the north at Winterfell. And that's where we're gonna make our first change. The Night King is gonna win the battle this time. Throughout the whole show, even though we follow different people battle for control of the Iron Throne, we've gotten constant reminders of this looming threat that is the Long Night and the Night King. So after seven seasons of build up of the White Walkers, it felt a little disappointing when he was taken out relatively easily. It really felt like at the start of the season there were two big issues, the Night King and Cersei, but for whatever reason only six episodes were made of the final season, so both issues only get about three episodes. But because we've had seven seasons of build up for these issues, it makes their respective resolutions feel really rushed. So the Night King is going to win this battle, and in the process some of our minor characters are gonna die. That was one thing that stood out to me immediately when I first watched this episode. All of a sudden Game of Thrones had gone from a show where it felt like any character could die at any time, to a show where characters had developed plot armor. For example, somehow Sam lives this. So most of the side characters aren't going to survive this battle. Also while we're changing things about this episode, let's turn up the brightness a little bit. I remember when I first watched this episode with my brother, we spent about a minute or two just trying to figure out the settings on our remote to turn up the brightness as high as it could go so we could see. And if you don't remember how bad it was, I've actually turned up the brightness on all the clips I've used so far. This is what it normally looks like. Anyways, back to the episode. Once it's become painfully clear that our heroes have lost the battle, we're gonna have the Starks, Jon, Daenerys, Tyrion, and Jaime run away using horses and dragons, retreating south for King's Landing. We would then pick up with Cersei and King's Landing getting a message that Daenerys Targaryen is outside the gates, but she isn't there to attack, she's there to talk. We would then get a scene set up similarly to this one, but with the survivors of the Battle of Winterfell on the outskirts of King's Landing begging to be let in and imploring Cersei that they need to work together because the Night King is on his way. They would have a back and forth with Cersei convinced that this is a trick of some sort, and Tyrion trying to convince his sister that the threat is very real. This would ultimately not work though, and Cersei would have the archers along the wall prepare to fire on her mark. And right as she is about to lower her hand to give the order to fire, a snowflake would fall on her hand. After a confusing few seconds for Cersei, a steady snowfall would begin. This would be so jarring in the normally sunny King's Landing that this would be enough proof for Cersei and she would let them in so they could start preparing for the coming battle. Things would be a lot more even this time. The Night King would have a bigger army than before since he would raise the dead from the Battle of Winterfell. But the combined army in King's Landing has the Golden Company, two dragons, the Iron Fleet, and a city full of ballistas. The battle would start out in favor of the humans, but every time it seems like the White Walker army was cut down to a reasonable size, the Night King would simply raise the dead again, slowly growing his army. 
Without having time to come up with a solid plan to take out the Night King, this would become a battle of attrition that the humans can't win. And eventually we would cut to each of our main characters in a bad spot, and before we could see what happens to them, it would fade to black. Finally, our last shot of the show would be the Night King on the Iron Throne, showing that Cersei's greedy desire to rule the kingdom at any cost has actually doomed Westeros. I think this would be a big improvement from what we got because what always set Game of Thrones apart from other shows full of knights and kings were the more mystical aspects of the show. The dragons, the white walkers, and the magic. And I think the original plan was for the white walkers to be important all the way to the end of the show. I mean, the very first scene of the show to get people hooked was a white walker attacking a group of the Night's Watch. So for the Night King to be defeated three episodes before the finale never really sat well with me. And it might seem overly harsh that Tyrion and Jaime not being able to convince Cersei to work together with Daenerys' forces would lead to the villain winning in the end, but this would be consistent with what has already been established. We've already seen in Game of Thrones that mistakes can have dire consequences. Like Rob not marrying Walder Frey's daughter helped lead to his betrayal, or Jon getting in over his head trying to grab a white led to one of Daenerys' dragons being killed and the Night King got the means to destroy the wall. Going this route does have one unfortunate consequence though. Because we're pretty much getting rid of the Cersei vs Daenerys subplot by having the Night King be a season long conflict, we won't be getting the triumphant moment of Daenerys finally winning control of the Iron Throne. But we didn't really get that in the original season anyways, because as soon as Daenerys defeats the Lannister army, she rapidly descends into madness, and goes from the one who wants to break the wheel to the one who wants to burn down the city. And I personally think that the negative of not getting Daenerys' triumphant moment is outweighed by the various improvements of going in this new direction. But let me know what you think in the comments down below. Do you prefer my new ending, the original ending, or do you have something that's even better? And if you enjoyed the video, make sure to like and subscribe. It would really help out. Finally, thanks for watching.